All right. So when we're taking a look at cells, remember we've talked about cells as being prokaryotic, eukaryotic, and then there's these little things called viruses. Those are the three big categories we talked about. The prokaryotic cells, they were, they were things that we call bacteria and archaebacteria. Those are the two that were prokaryotic. They don't have any nucleus. They're tiny. They're very small, which explains how there could be so many of them in your body. All around your body, you're surrounded by bacteria. Eukaryotic cells are cells that have nuclei. They're bigger. They, gen they tend to be bigger, more complicated. And you can have plants, and you can have uh, animal cells. So obviously, it's a human white blood cell. You can see the size differences. A virus is tiny. A virus is not a, a cell. And because it's not a cell, remember our, our cell theory, and that's all life is made of cells. That means that a virus is not alive. Now, this is an argument. Some people, some scientists are still arguing about this. But if you're going to say that all, cell, all life is made of cells as the basic unit of life, then you can't include viruses as being alive because they're not made of cells. There are no cells. Bacteria are the smallest living cells, right? So this is a cell. There's a cell membrane. There's DNA and RNA. There's ribosomes. It has non-membrane-bound organelles, but viruses don't have all that. So we talked about the different kinds, or at least in the other classes, we talked about the different kinds of, 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 of cells, but we also talked about the different kinds of, of pictures that we can take of these cells. So here you have what's called an amoeba. This is one of those proteins. It's eukaryotic. It lives in water. It's in streams and ponds. It can cause brain infections. So uh, they can be very nasty. They eat bacteria. Normally in the ecology, all they do is, is eat bacteria. So they eat small, tiny, single-celled organisms. They themselves are single-celled. There's only one cell here. Now this weird-looking U, this weird-looking U is a Greek letter. It means micro. So when you see this, just think micro, all right? So this is a what meter? Micrometer. Micrometer. And here are the units. A micrometer is negative 6, and a nanometer is even smaller. It's negative 9. So what does that mean when we talk about micro, negative 9, 10 to negative 6, 10 to negative 9? What are we talking about? What? 1 times 10 to negative three, what is that? What is that? What number, what does that even mean? Does that not look, does that look weird? Does that look weird to you? What does that mean, negative three? That's right, it's point zero zero one. How did you know that? What did you do? You moved the decimal how many times? Three times. And how did you know to move it to the, to the left and not to the right? So you moved it three times because there's a three, and you moved it to the left, not to the right, because of the negative. So this means to the left, and this is the number of times, the number of times that you move the decimal. It's just that easy. That's why the scientific, this is called scientific notation, and it's really easy because of that. These are exponents, obviously. Pull out your calculators, please. If you don't have your calculators, pull out your phones. If you have an iPhone, turn it sideways. I don't know how Google phones work. You say Google phones. Whatever. I, mean, it's I don't care what they are. It's a, it's a Android. It's a droid of some kind. Samsung, Gal whatever you got. It's all running Google software, so that's what it is. All right. So go ahead and push... And on your calculator, you really need to bring, start bringing your scientific calculators, people. You're going to need them. One times, go ahead and push one times 10 to negative three. Oh, wait, how do you do that on a calculator? Well, it's, don't do that. There is a button on your calculator that says E, E. It looks like that. Do you see that? Does everybody have that? Does somebody not have it on their calculator? Huh? Well, it, yeah, don't do that. Uh, well, that works too for, some, to, for somewhat, but EE is better. 
So you'll, you'll see, it turns out that the math changes if you do times 10 negative 3. You don't have it? Let me see. Bring it here. It's probably a secondary function. So some calculator, bring it here. Come on. Some calculators you have to look, if there's going to be a function or a color code. You have to, there's this, come here. You have to push, some calculators, every calculator is different though. Uh, you have times 10 to the N. Do you see that? So on her calculator, she doesn't have EE. What she has is a button that looks like this times, uh, I'm sorry, it should be, it says uh, times 10 to the N power. All right, so EE it means the same thing. So it's this part of 1 times 10 to the whatever. So these two buttons are the same thing on your calculator. Now, does everybody have one of those two buttons? All right, that's the button you want to use right here. You got it? Go ahead and push that and see if you, what you get. One, either EE and then negative 3, or 1X times 10 and N, negative 3. You have to push negative. Don't forget to put negative. What happens? Point zero zero 0.001 is what you should have. Does everybody have that? Like, she has 1 over 1,000 because hers is doing in fractions. I, that's fine, but you probably wanted to change the decimals. So, you got it? Oh, okay, all right. You can help her if she doesn't know how. All right, so everybody got it then? It's supposed to be 0 0.01, right? 0.001. Did you put negative 3? Oh. No, it should be. Yeah, no, it should be point zero zero one. No, it shouldn't, because you move it over three times, it should be one, two, three, zero zero one. How? If it's ten, you move it over three. One, two. It's see, that's that's what I'm trying to say to you. It's not ten. Ten, you move it over three times. One e e negative three. That's what. I, did you do that? Please don't put one times. Just listen. One EE e, negative three. Can you do that? You got it? All right. It's, it's a one. You're changing the one. You're not changing the ten. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Just use EE. E. That's, why, that's why I tell you don't use ten to the negative three. Use EE e or this symbol. Yeah? I, I don't have one. Ask someone else. Huh? Well, then you better get a scientific calculator the way it's on your supply list. I have a couple uh, backups if you need to use them in the closet. All right, everybody ready? Can we go on? Yes. All right, so that's how, you, that's how you're going to do scientific notation. So if we did this one that's 10 to the negative 6, what is it? 1 times 10 to the negative 6 and that's going to be micrometers. How many meters is that? Obviously, this was millimeters here. This is micrometers. That's that funky U with an M. A meter, you know a meter is a meter long, right? A meter stick is a meter. So micrometers, that meter stick divided into a million pieces. A millimeter is that meter stick divided into a thousand pieces, right? Thousand little lines. That's why there's a little lines on your on your meter stick. A centimeter is what? A hundred pieces. So you take a meter divided into a hundred, you get a centimeter. Divide it into a thousand, you get a millimeter. Divide it into a million, and you get a micrometer. But how many decimal places, isn't it? Go ahead and do it on your calculator. Let me see. Tell me, what is it? You can do it in your mind if you want, but I'd like, to, I'd like you to do it on a calculator so you know how to... I want to make sure you're aware of how to make these calculations on your calculator. 1, EE, e, negative 6. Make sure you put the negative. What did you get? 0.000... Oh, don't go so fast. 0, 0... It's 5 zeros in a 1. Thank you. It's six places. How many places are in a million? Six. She was confused. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Wait, what? 
You want to see? Well, six zeros. Six zeros. You want a six figure or a seven figure salary? Seven. Right? The, the, the bigger, well, why is everyone confused then? I don't understand why it gets to these numbers, why there's such confusion. You know, oh, you want a six figure? I want a six figure. I don't want a three figure. All right, well, then why don't we get this wrong? All right, so, anyways, then there's one last one, and that's a nanometer. Right? What are you confused about? One times ten negative nine, and that equals what? Eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Now that's a really tiny number. You agree? Yes. All right. So let's think about this stuff. These are very small numbers. Very small numbers. Let me join all these together. All right. So now let's take a look at this. Now, that being said, what, what do they want you to do? They want you to go ahead and find out how many, in this case, micrometers, is it from here to here. Go ahead and do it. Figure it out now. Go. I'll give you three minutes to at least figure out how to do it if you can't do it on your own. Bring it up. How are you going to do it? I should have said three minutes, that's 30 seconds, because they're not done. Three minutes. It's not that hard, but it is, it is hard the first time you do it, but after you get an idea how to work with scales, it's like, it's not a big deal. All right, so how would you do it? Who give me, somebody give me a plan. What would you, just an idea. Just give me an idea. I gave you time to think. Give me an idea. Yeah, go ahead, Car Carly. Every time I say Carly, I think of my nephews being in love with iCarly. He was in love with her. All right, go ahead. He was mad when he found out she had a boyfriend. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but how, how do you know how many... What, what is 100? What does that mean? What is 100 micrometers? Does that mean the, does that, does that 100 micrometers mean that the, the thing is 100 micrometers? What does that mean? Somebody read it for me. You see this, what does it mean? You guys, you have to be able to do this on a test, so make sure you look at it. You see this, 100 micrometers, what does that mean? What's 100 micrometers? Huh? It, you, you're saying the amoeba. I understand that. I'm just saying it's not the amoeba. What is 100 micrometers? The line. The line is 100 micrometers. So how many of these lines are there from the amoeba from this end to this end of the amoeba? Oh, I definitely got that one. All right. So then how do you do it? Take a card or a piece of paper. I don't care what you do. And then take that card. Oh, Take that card. You, get, you go ahead and, and look at your piece of paper. It's over there. You get a card. And you take this paper and put it right next to it and make little marks on there. Mark here and here. So how, what are you going to do? You're going to go one and you're going to put a dot there. And then you're going to move it. Oops. That's the problem on this thing. It, it kind of... So there's a dot there. Then I go and move it here. That's two. Then I move it here. That's three. Then I move it again. Maybe three and a half. Just estimating. Now, I could give you a ruler, and you can measure it directly, right? But I, I can go three and a half of these lines. Do you agree? Do you agree there's three and a half of these lines, 3.5 of these lines, from here to here, across, from here to here? If you say so. You think it's another number? You put whatever number you want. I'm just saying, I'm calling it three and a half. I'm estimating it based on, just, the eye, I'm eyeballing it here. You guys can get a much more accurate reading on your paper. 
my scale changes because I have, uh, I'm trying to, oops, I don't want to do that. Well, let's hold on a second. So what, so what do you guys got? Let's get it, let's take an average. Let's get, let's get a consensus. Somebody says three, somebody says three and a half. Raise your hand if you say three. All right, raise your hand if you say three and a half. So the rest of you failed because you have no answer. Is that right? I want everyone participating. If you can't participate, you don't deserve a grade, guys. Everybody participates. Let's try it again. Three or three and a half? Make a choice. Raise your hand if you think it's three. May, raise your hand if you think it's three and a half. How do you three and a half? Well, it's like a little bit extra. It's just a little bit no, it's not. Let me break out my ear. You men don't do it right there. I have rulers here if you insist on getting rulers. Yeah. Here's some rulers if you like. It's three. So you think it's three. Okay. I, I said the three. Let's go with three. I just need an answer, so I don't. It, to me, what matters is that we're all pretty much. Is everybody? Can everyone live with the number three? Yes. All right. No one has an objection, so I'm going to go ahead and put three. Three. So is it three micrometers then? No. No. What? Three hundred. Three hundred. Why did she say three hundred micrometers? That's right. That's right. But I guarantee you that some of the people here who are not answering are going to get it wrong on the test. And it's easy, right? Do you all agree this is easy? Yeah. This is not hard. So 300, 300 micrometers, just that easy. Now what about the, the next cell here we have? Uh, we have this shell. This is not a single cell. I think it's a, it's a oh, it is a single-celled organism. It's made, it's, the shell is made by a single-celled organism. So the, how big is this thing? There's 100 micrometers. How big is it? How are we going to do that? Again, oh, which, like, I would just go with the longest line. So I would measure it from here to here, right? Give me a number, how big you think that is. Use your rulers, use your cards. It doesn't matter to me. By the way, when you're on the AC, huh? You think it's three as well? You all agree? No. That's definitely three and a half. All right, somebody's saying three and a half. That's okay. That one three and a half. That's for sure. That one three and a half. Wait. All right, so raise your hand if you think it. Um, one more time. Raise your hand if you think it's 300 micrometers or three, mic three of those lines, three and a half of those lines. Somebody says four. If you go four, it's out of the box. Are you on this? Are you are you on this thing? All right, so. So this is this is three and a half. I think we have a consensus. This is three and a half. So what is it? Three fifty. Is this hard? No, it's not. It's making my brain hurt. I don't know why, but there it is. So the next part might make your brain hurt, but it really shouldn't. What about the next one? This spirochete, this this long single-celled organism, a bacteria that's that's kind of spirally. It goes from this end to this end. This can be harder to do. It goes from this, but it curves around. You're going to have to estimate, obviously, since we can't stretch it out. Try to make your best guess. Give me a number. You said what? 3.25? I got four. Four. Anybody else? It, there is no real wrong answer here because it depends on where you're starting and where you're finishing. As long as you get the idea, you're good. Somebody, somebody give me a... Somebody says five? Five? You think five? Seven. Like seven. seven? Oh, you're trying to you. Yeah, you're, he's following the curves around. I can see that. I can see that. It, it, he's kind, he's trying to include the curves. He's trying to he's trying to imagine it straightened out. But you know that's fine. So now we just have to come to a consensus that we're all going to write. So raise your hand if you think it's four. Okay. Raise your hand if you say five. 
right. So more five, so fours are out. It, what about six? Seven? So two people say seven. So we're going to go with five. Okay? It's not that you're wrong, because it all depends on where you start and where you stop. Right? As long as you're doing it correctly, uh, you, as long as you're following these kind of guidelines of looking at this line and try to figure out how, many, how long is that in terms of line. So we're saying it's five, so how many micrometers? 500. Is it? It's just five. This is no, this is not, this is one. See, that's, that's the trick. You have to be careful. The devil's in the details. The, the idea is easy. The idea is easy, but the details can make you, give you a wrong answer. All right. So next one, epidermis. Let's look at epidermal cells, a skin cell. Let's look at a skin cell. You're going to measure only A. Don't try to measure from one. This is a slice of your skin, and it's dyed. And if you measure from the long end, from one end to the other, obviously that's a nucleus, from one end to the other, that's not a cell wall, that's a cell membrane. They're just stacked next to each other. Oh, good. Yeah, you're going to look at these under the microscope next week. Yeah, you're gonna look at skin. You're gonna look at all kinds of things. What do we got? Two. Two. Everybody says two. Okay. Yeah. All right. And seeing, no, hearing no objections. Two. How big is it? A hundred is correct. All right. Next one. Uh, Daphnia. This is a multicellular organism. It's real tiny. They're really cute. They're also called water fleas. They have a little heart that pumps. You can, they're clear, so you can see them. At, uh, at some point, we'll look at them. Hopefully, I'll, we'll find some in pond water. Say what? Yeah, you can see little, they're little dots. They, it's, uh, you won't see this detail with the naked eye, but you can see it. Yeah, is you doing the little tail part? I don't know. Do you guys want to include the tail or not? All right, let's include the tail from from tip of leg to tail, tip of tail. What is it? Two? Two and a half. Two and a half. I'm here at two and a half. We're going to say two and a half. So how big is it? How big is the Daphnia? Two and a half? Yeah. It's two and a half. You sold. No. Makai, calm down. Two and a half. Two and a half what? <laughs> is it two and a half micrometers? Ah, uh, it goes again. It's, it's two and a half, two and a half millimeters. So now, the papillomavirus is how, is how, is how wide there at the long, let's say from here to here. Again, you're going to get two numbers because somebody's going to go from here to here and somebody else is going to go from here to here. And obviously, this is shorter. How are we supposed to go? Whichever one, I don't care. Just give me a number. I just want to put a number down so we get to the good stuff. Up and down. Up and down. What do you say? Point two. What did you say? You say one. So this is one of these lines. Is everybody okay with one? One of those lines? No. 1.15? 1.25. You guys are way too accurate. But I'm good. I'm good with that. It's not that it's a bad thing. It's like... I don't got one and a half. I think it's like 1.25. I think it's like one and a quarter. All right. So everybody okay with one and a quarter? We'll just we'll, we'll say one and a quarter. So 1.25. 1. So what's, what's, the, what's the mic? What is it? If it's 1.25 of these lines, then what is it? Use your calculators. Use your calculator. Zero point one two five. What? All you gotta do is move the decimal over. I'm trying to figure out what color to use here. So zero point one two five. Is that correct? Everybody agree with that? Yes, sir. So there's our numbers. Now comes the hard part, which is not really hard, but how are we going to translate these from micrometers to nanometers? Are you ready? We're going to use something called the factor label method. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't go right now if I were you. 
Uh, but if it's an emergency, I'm not. I'm just going to keep going. You'll have to watch the video later. Okay. All right. So before I go on, it's called the factor. Oh, not labor. Label method. All right. This is used in physics, chemistry, biology, all the sciences, engineering. It guarantees you a right answer. Assuming you measured correctly and you take your time, there's no way you get this wrong. Especially since you could use a calculator. I, 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 I really, it's going to be very hard for you to mess this up. You have to know your conversion numbers. You have to know these, right? This table of e what we call equivalences, right? As long as you know those, then you're fine. So the way you do it is you put, what, you put an equal sign, and on this side, you're going to put what you want. So let's take a look at the amoeba. You want what? Millimeters. Millimeters. And on the, on the left side, you're going to put what you have. What do you have? Micrometers. Micrometers. How many micrometers, specifically? 300. 300. You're going to put that over 1 and put it in brackets. So that's what you're starting with. And you want to end over there. Well, how are we going to get rid of micrometers? You have to cancel out, right? So micrometers are on the bottom. So how many does 1 micrometer equals... Or how many micrometers in... What can we convert it to? What can we convert micrometers to? We've got to convert it back. Like, uh, we have, what is it? 10 to the negative 9 what? Meters. 10 to the negative 9 meters. So, you have 1 meter. In 1 meter, you have what? How many? 10 to the what? Negative 9. I'm sorry, that's not true. One times ten to the negative nine meters equals one micrometer. So you take a meter, divide it a million times, and you got a micrometer. Didn't I say that? Did I say that? Right. I I didn't say I didn't say how many picometers. Look at what this. Look at what your graph says. Your graph is talking about picometers. Your table, your table. I looked at that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's look at negative nine. It, negative nine what? My equals what? Negative nine ma nanometers equals what? Like thousand uh, a thousand picometers. We're not talking about picometers. I'm not dealing with picometers. Do you want to talk about picometers? We can talk about picometers if you want. No, I'd rather... I just want you to listen to what I'm saying. All right, so micro means negative 9. That's this symbol here. You see it? That Greek letter. Mu. It means negative 9. The M means what? Meter. Meter. So 1 micrometer equals 10 to negative 9 meters. Are we clear? I'm, I'm giving you the equivalence. I wrote it down. One micrometer is one times ten negative nine meters. And you can write it a different way. One meter equals one times ten to the nine micrometers, right? I, one meter is a million micrometers. Or one meter can be divided into one million smaller pieces. Does that make sense? What is it that's not making sense? Don't say, tell me. Help me understand what you were confused about. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Go ahead. I mean, I, mean I need you to help me make, like, what I are you confused about? Out, like, I'm going to figure it out. Okay. So you got a meter, a meter stick. Hello, man. That was from school to speak. It's journey. <laughs> Mr. Mendoza speaking, may I help you? Uh, I can 
can try later. All right. Bye bye. Here. So, you have a meter stick and you divide it into a million pieces. So, one micrometer, one of these million pieces, this is a million, one million pieces. Oh, that's not true. It's not a million because a million, is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's not times 10 negative 9, though. That's my bad. What is it? Who, what is the answer? Do you guys, have you guys been writing your stuff down? What is a micrometer? It's negative 6, right? Oh, my. I see, I was right. I should have said All right, so you're right. So it's negative 6. But you should have said it because I was asking you what were you confused about. But it didn't make sense. So you take a meter, take one meter, that's a meter, it's a standard, right? Divide it into a, into a million pieces. This is a ruler, right? What do we do? What do these little lines do on a ruler? They do what to this ruler? They divide it. They separate it, right? That's what division means. What, that, didn't you ever ask yourself, what does it mean to divide? Division means you take something, you split it up into pieces. That's what you're doing. I have a banana, and I give you, I divide it by two. What am I doing? Splitting into two pieces, right? So I got a meter stick, and I divide it into a million pieces. Yeah? Who's at the door? A million pieces, one meter equals what? A million micrometers. Because you can fit a million of those little lines in a meter. That's all. What's a centimeter? I take that meter and I do what with, this, with a centimeter? Not a half. Centi means what? What is a century? All right. Centi means a hundredth. Hundredth. So I take a meter and divide it into what? A hundred pieces. So a centimeter, when you look at this ruler, and you see it's this big, that is taking a meter and dividing it into a hundred parts. That's what a centimeter is. That's all it is. It's all this is this, that's why it's not hard, but you gotta think about it. Now a millimeter is a thousandth, right? So a millimeter, but to take that same meter, because this the second M means meter. This means meter, right? This means meter. So take that meter and divide it into how many? What's a milli? That's not a million. That's not a million. How many legs does a millipede have? A thousand. So a centipede has how many legs? A hundred. By the way, a millipede does not really have a thousand. And a centipede doesn't really have them. You know, it's just... It's just they just use that word, okay? Huh? I don't know. But it's not a thousand. All right. So, focusing for a minute. Waste of time to go already? No. All right. All right. Trying to focus. Trying to focus because you're telling me you're confused. So, focus and try to figure this out. It's important you figure this out. You got a million of these. So, you have 10 to the 6 micrometers in one meter. Or... 0. 0.0001, right? 0. 0.501, right? Mm -hmm. Of a meter is one micrometer. Do you agree? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it doesn't make sense to you? What is it? Just help me. Don't say it just doesn't make sense. I don't. And why are you all quiet? You're sitting back there being quiet. I don't know if you understand or not. So I got to give you a quiz, right? No. So, if you so help me out. Participate. What are you confused about? All right, conversion, to, we're not even there yet. I'm just trying to get you to understand what, what it means when I say negative six or, and what is a meter. Do you understand this thus far? That this is, a, it, this is what we call an equivalence. These are equal to each other. Okay, as long as we get that. All right. So, like, here, if I took this, 300, and I'm trying to get to millimeter, and I put, I put micrometer at the bottom, what am I going to put at the top? 
What are the two, the two, uh, if I'm going to multiply this, if I multiply it, I can multiply this number by one. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. If I multiply this number by one, I don't change the value. No. Is that correct? Yes. Everybody agrees with that? We're okay with that? Yes. All right. So if I have some micrometers, some number micrometers, and I, whatever this is, if they're equal, if this if this is equal to this, and I'm dividing it, what does that equal? If I divide any number by itself, what does it equal? Zero. Zero? One. one. It equals one, right? Six divided by six is... Six divided by six is... A million divided by a million is... I'm telling you one meter is equal to 10 to the six micrometers, correct? Everybody okay with that? Okay, so I can put meter on top. I'm allowed to do that. And I can put what on the bottom? How many micrometers? One meter is equal to how many micrometers? Uh, five zeros in a one. one times 10 to the 6 micrometers, or point zero zero five zeros in a 1. Oh, I'm, uh, it's to the 6. But what is this? It's 1 over 1 times 10 to 6. Take 1. Take, use your calculator. Take 1. Somebody give her a calculator. This is part of your problem. Give her a calculator. Everybody else do this. Everybody else? No, you can't. Obviously, you're telling me you're confused. So I'm telling you to do it. Take 1 and divide it by, everybody do it, 1 and divide it by 1 e. 1 e e 6, not negative 6, 6. 5 zeros and a 1, right? 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Now go ahead and put 1 e e 6. Go ahead and do 1 e e 6. 1 e e 6 is what? Same number, correct? They're the same. That's what 1 e e negative 6, 10 to negative 6 means. It's 1 divided by 1 million. That's 0 0.00001, right? Are we good with this? Yeah. So these two are equal. So this is the, basically, this is like multiplying times what? Times 1. Because this is equal to 1, right? One meter is equal to one times 10 to, 10 to 6 micrometers, correct? Yeah. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, just to help you under, put it all together, if this next part confuses you, then just kind of ignore it. But if you wanted to, you can write it another way. What's another way I could write it? I could write the same thing, the same process, get 300 micrometers divided by 1. I can write 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters equals what? Equals what? 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters equals what? Look at your equivalences that you should have written down. These two are both equivalent. 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters equals what? 1 micrometer. So I can write it either way. But as I just showed you, 1 divided by 1 times, 10 to negative, 1 times 10 to 6 is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 6. That's what that negative means. A negative exponent means you're dividing it by some number. That's why it's a decimal. Are we good with this? May I go on? You seem frustrated some of you. I'm just hoping maybe we can go on and give me another couple examples to see if we get the hang of it. So, so what's going to happen to micrometers in this problem? They cancel out. Does everybody see that they cancel out? Micrometers cancels out? All right. Can I show you a trick? This will save you trouble. It turns out that when you when you when you divide by 
these exponents, I could change this 300 into the scientific notation as well. What would, it, what would I change the sci that in the scientific notation? So how would I do that? Three, three times 10 to the what? Three, what would equal 300? Three times 10 to the second power. How many decimals is this? Look. One, two, three, move one, two decimals is what? 300. All right. So three times 10 to two over one, that was micrometers, one meter divided by one times 10 to the six. Now, there's a reason I'm doing this, so I hope you li you're listening because your life will be a lot easier for the, literally the rest of your life if you go into the sciences. So if you have this, micrometers cancel out. All right? And by the way, yeah, that's right. Now here's where, the, here's where the fun part comes in. When you divide exponents, you're subtracting them. When you divide exponents, you are subtracting them. When you multiply exponents, you add them. Write that rule down and practice it. Write it down, because when you're doing the rest of these problems for homework, did you? Because you're telling me you're confused, so I'm, I'm confused of what you're confused about. I keep telling you stuff, you keep telling me you know it, but then you say you're confused. So anyways, I'll say it one more time. When you divide exponents, you're subtracting them. And those of you that are in middle school or wherever, eighth grade or whatever you are, you guys should be learning this now to put you ahead later. This is true of math and science anywhere. You divide exponents, you're subtracting them. When you're multiplying exponents, you're adding them. Are we clear? Yes. All right. So what am I going to do with these exponents? Subtract. What am I subtracting? So three times one is three. There's only meters. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Three. And that's, this is all equal to three because three times one is three. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Three times one is three. All right. Now, three times, uh, three times one what? What do I have? What's left? What is this? Meters. I have to put meters. It didn't go. That meters didn't cancel. Micrometers did. What what exponent do I have? Times ten to the what? Two minus six is what? Negative four. So it's three times ten to negative four meters. That's how many meters I have if I have what? If I have three micrometers, it's ten, three times ten to the negative four meters. Three hundred micrometers is equal to three times ten to the negative four meters. Are we good with this so far? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That so they see how easy that is. You don't even need a calculator if you can if you can do if you remember that rule. Now, how are we going to get to millimeters, though? we got to do it again, don't we? Mm -hmm. So we need another equivalence. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, because this gets us somewhere, but it doesn't get us where we need to be. Let's erase this. So... How do we get to millimeters? We got meters, what do we have to do? Put another equivalence. Put another one, multiply times another one. So what do we want on top? What do we want on top? We want millimeters. What do we need to cancel? We need to cancel what? Meters. How many millimeters in a meter? Milli means what? Thousand. So it's a thousand millimeters in one meter. What happens to meters? They cancel. 
So now let's do the math. Now the math becomes real easy. So I got negative six. I'm subtract. I got. I'm gonna go. Let me change this to three times ten to the second power of micrometers over one divided by one meter. One times ten to the six micrometers times one times ten to what? The third millimeters over one meter. So micrometers cancel out, meters cancel out. I'm left with millimeters. That's what I want. So I do the math. Now I could do one of two things. I could use my calculator to take 300 times 1,000, divide by 1 times 10 to 6, right? Or I could go ahead and use my scientific notation, say 3. What do I do with this this 3 and this 2? What am I going to do with them? Add them. Add them because I'm multiplying them. So I could simplify this by going 3, sorry, let me use the same color, 3 times 10 to what? The fifth power yes. in millimeters divided by what? 1 times 10 to the 6, no units. What do I end up with? 3x to the... 3 times 10 to the what? Negative, Negative 1 Negative millimeters. One. Now, I'm telling you this. You go ahead and use your calculators and use scientific notation. Let me see your calculator. If you look at your calculator, should be as, you should be able to change it to scientific mode. I think you change it. You look at, click mode, touch mode on your scientific calculator. And then go down to psi. Instead of normal, click psi. I don't know how you enter your brothers. Enter. I'm going to enter. All right, so go ahead. Here. When you hit, once you're in scientific mode, it'll give you all the answers in times 10 to the whatever. So it, I'd like you to do two things. I want you to go ahead and multiply 300 times 1,000 and divide by a million and see what number you get. See if you don't get this. 300 times 1,000 divided by a million. That's a lot. It's really easy if you know your scientific notation. Life really becomes nothing. This becomes like, what is it? 0.3. And what's this? This is 0.3. Scientific notation allows you to do math very quickly in your head without having to use a calculator, really. But if you need to use a calculator, it even makes that simple. So your homework tonight, is it almost time to go? Yes. All right, listen, your homework tonight is to finish these. Do all the rest of the conversions. Be ready to come in tomorrow. Yeah, you have the rest of these conversions. You have to do it using a scientific notation, please.